Well, looks like Matt Walsh has pissed everyone off. But you don't have to tell that to us. We've been known that Matt Walsh is a clout goblin and a grifter. However, it looks like his recent comments about video games and Sweet Baby Ink and wokeness in video games has a lot of the people on the right going, yeah, he's an idiot. You don't have to take my word for it. We're going to have a clip in today's video where we watch someone on the right that you guys are familiar with talk about how Matt Walsh is just a tourist in this space and shouldn't be taking credit for any of this stuff. Before we jump into that though, I wanna thank you for clicking on this video. If you enjoy this content, hit subscribe, hit like, and leave a comment down below. Now, let's look at a clip from Matt Walsh and talk about what's actually happening. However, if you're not familiar with the Sweet Baby Ink drama, you can click here. I'm gonna leave links to videos where I've talked about it uh, or do a quick search online, it's all over the place. But I've covered it a couple times on my channel and that's kind of what started all of this. This is a clip where it seems like Matt Walsh is taking credit for bringing attention to wokeness in video games. And it seems like a lot of people in the YouTube space are really mad because they claim they've been talking about wokeness for a very long time and Matt is just a tourist. Let's listen to his comments. Is that the video game industry without a lot of fanfare has transformed into a tool of both propaganda and surveillance. It's an effective way to indoctrinate children precisely because it hasn't received much attention and also because children spend, many of them, hundreds of hours a year, and that might be an undercount, a severe undercount, uh, 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 with this kind of content. So it should get, it our, get a lot of our attention. And now finally that attention is here. And it's yet another reason to keep these games as far away from your children as possible. And if you do that, Games journalists, literally the lowest form of journalists on the planet, will accuse you of harassment. And that's exactly how you'll know that you're doing the right thing. So in that clip, it seems like Matt Walsh is taking credit for bringing attention to wokeness in video games. And this isn't a new thing for Matt Walsh. He's been on this platform for a while, except not just the wokeness platform, this video game propaganda platform where he's talked about it being bad for children. Matter of fact, here is a video that he made about a year ago. Video games are a sacred cow because our country is filled with adults who are obsessed with them. That's why we all pretend insanely that there's nothing wrong with or disturbing about a child spending all day killing people in a virtual world. So here's the reality of what's happening. Matt Walsh is using this platform, the platform of the anti-sweet baby ink, anti-woke, like the pro-diversity stuff, all of this stuff that's happening right now, he's using that platform as a opportunity for him to jump up and go, yeah, yeah, I agree, like woke is bad in video games. By the way, video games aren't made for kids and adults shouldn't be playing them either. They're bad. They're a bad thing for our community. They're a bad thing for the world. Uh, so he's leeching off of another movement to lift up his messaging, his narrative, his propaganda. And that's the thing is that we see this all the time. People in my space call it out all the time. And it's just a little wild that people on the right now, you know, they're calling Matt Walsh out. And I'm not saying that gives them any credit on my end. Like I'm not saying, hey, let's um, you know invite them over to have pizza or something. I'm just saying it's very interesting to watch as Matt Walsh gets dogpiled by both communities. Because guess what, Matt? Your whole take on this isn't popular on the right either. You are literally pushing this, this concept that the vast majority of people in both camps do not agree with. And I don't understand why you're so set on this. What is this winning you? Is there some, do you have a metric showing that, hey, this platform about being anti-video game, uh, you know, saying that it's bad for kids and adults should be playing this platform. Is this, is this a popular winning thing for you? Who's keeping track of these numbers? This is a weird thing. Normally Matt Walsh sways with the conservative people and drives that conversation. This one is completely outside of that bubble. And you don't have to take my word for it. Here's Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers. He's talking about Matt Walsh here, about how he should not be taking credit for bringing attention to Woken video games because his community, Jeremy's community has been doing it for a while and um, that he's misrepresenting a lot of stuff here. It's just a small clip, but listen to this with me and um, then we're gonna talk a bit more. And it is a, it's such a different world. And someone like Matt Walsh has no idea about this world. He doesn't understand it. He's not wrong. He doesn't get it. I don't think he wants to get it. And that is the problem with everything that he had to say. Now he goes through this video game topic for uh, about 19, 20 minutes, uh, he's covering the uh, radical wokeness in the video game industry. Now, am I glad that he is at least highlighting this problem? Absolutely. But everything he said, he is completely, completely off base on. He doesn't understand what's going on. He doesn't understand that it's been happening and people have been talking about it and highlighting it for a long time. He then said that 
uh, kids are spending hundreds of hours a, a year playing video games. It's like, bro, they're spending hundreds of hours a week playing True. video games. Trust me, I hate having to agree with Jeremy. <laughs> I do. But so much of what he said there is actually true. That was a moment where he's speaking truth. He's talking directly to what Matt Walsh is saying. And that's the reality is Matt Walsh is really just using this whole Sweet Baby Ink thing to push his uh, his issue with children playing video games and with adults being engaged in video games, which is also weird because Matt Walsh himself uses video games to promote his content, which is supposed to be family-friendly content. The stuff that he makes is supposed to be for everyone in the family to sit around and listen to him talking about stuff. He uses video games to promote his platform. Don't believe me? Let's look. All right, here's Matt's channel. As you see, the dark side to the video game industry, which is the most recent video. Then he's got the one where he's talking about the, the angry mob coming after him because of his tweet that we looked at. But then let's look at this. This video game was made for me four months ago. Conservative dad plays Grand Theft Auto for the first time two years ago. So would you say Grand Theft Auto is probably not appropriate for kids? conservative dad so you're is this intended to bring people to your channel here uh matt walsh tries and fails to play call of duty for the first time conservative dad plays the most boring game ever made five nights at freddy's matt walsh plays mortal kombat x matt walsh plays mario kart with daily car what daily wire host and special guest tim pool call of duty modern warfare review with matt walsh matt walsh destroys gen z in a match of mortal kombat so you have an issue with video games, you have this issue with it, but you have no problem using it to make money by bringing people to your channel. It's a problem for children, but you have no problem showing gameplay and showing these things to the people watching your channel, which you're saying is family friendly. This is the same issue I had with that stupid Lady Ballers movie. You talked about how gay people and trans people were a dangerous thing to introduce to kids, but then you say the movie's good for the family. It just doesn't make any sense. Matt Walsh is 100% leeching off of what's happening right now. People on the right can see it. Obviously, the people on the left can see it. It's not a big secret to us that Matt Walsh does that. He does it with so many things. But now that he's putting a foot in the camp of the community and the gaming community, the conservative gaming community online, trying to act like he is the savior of wokeness in video games, is kind of ridiculous. Which, by the way, quick update on Sweet Baby Ink. Now, if you don't remember what kicked this all off was a list on Steam created by someone who was talking about wokeness in video games. And then somebody from Sweet Baby Ink chiming in on that, asking for it to be removed. And that started this whole thing. Well, there's an interview with the person that made the list, and this is what they had to say. In an interview on YouTube, the man who claims he started Sweet Baby Ink Detected says his interest in the company began with Gods of War Ragnarok, a game he admits to never having played where he noticed things were different and wondered, why is this game like this? Navigating to Sweet Baby's website, he recounts looking over projects they've worked on, like the massively successful Spider-Man 2, another game he says he's never played, and noticing a pattern. Sweet Baby Ink Detective's creator, who said he's based in Brazil, never explains exactly what that pattern is, instead using buzzwords like woke products and virtue signaling, and noting that several of these games had an extremely diverse cast, Later in the interview, he complains that our games, our entertainment stuff we love are utilized for this kind of stuff, political agendas, without ever engaging with any of the content he's talking about. This is propaganda. So at the end of the day, whether you're in the right or the left on this, doesn't really matter. The fact is that all of this stuff coming out, this anti-diversity stuff, all of these people making these lists and talking about this content, they're not engaging with it. They're not a part of it, just like Matt Walsh is not a part of it. The real people that are playing and engaging with this content are enjoying the stuff that's coming out. They're going to spend their money on it. And if they're not enjoying it, they're not going to spend their money on it. All of the other stuff, the steps where it takes to get from A to Z in the creation process, whether person A makes a decision to change a character from a man to a woman or person B does it, it doesn't matter. What matters is the product that finally comes out and whether people that are wanting to play it, wanting to buy it, wanting to get engaged with it are actually doing that. That's all that matters. I don't play video games based on concept art or early versions of the game. I play a game based on what comes out, what is presented to me as a player, as someone that is engaging with the game. If I like it, I will continue to buy products from that company. If I don't like it, I will not buy products from that company. It is simple as that.